Some of you might remember the partner shaming episode about the earring, where a woman found an unknown earring in her bed, posted it to the internet, the internet collectively freaked out and assumed the worst, and then she later just admitted that her daughters had a sleepover and it's probably one of their friends. Well, it happened again. No, not the heart emoji and everything! Not gonna lie, this even got me going a little bit at first because I will admit, every time I see a coworker like save notes from another coworker, there's usually stuff going on. I've also said before that I really don't like the work wife, work husband dynamic when you're in an actual marriage because I think it's disrespectful. I think the worst I've ever heard was one of my girlfriends was going to visit her now ex-husband's work party and she went to introduce herself to a woman and the woman's response to meeting her was, oh, I didn't know he was married. You can't do that, guys. You can't do that. Even if you didn't know he was married, the only response to meeting your coworker's wife is to say, oh my god, he talks all the time about you. The rest is out of your hands. So you would think that any excuse that he could provide for this would be a steaming pile of horseshit, but as it turns out, there is a very good reason for that note. In an update video, the creator says that she actually went to go speak to this female coworker about the note, and the female coworker told her that the reason she left that note was that her husband brought in the nastiest, most disgusting flavored mint coffee that everyone hated, and so she left that note with the most sarcastic heart she could possibly draw. I'm so glad the algorithm brought me that update because that is so funny. So now not only is this dude getting dragged by everyone at work for his shit-ass coffee, but he's getting dragged at home too. So between the earring and this post-it note, there's actually a term for this phenomenon. You've probably already heard of Occam's razor, which is basically that the simplest solution is probably the solution. But you may not have heard of Hanlon's razor, which says, never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity, or ignorance in other text. Basically, it's the idea that a lot of the stuff that we assume is the most evil intent done against us, a lot of times is just stuff we don't know enough about or they didn't know enough about. This case was a perfect example of that. And I actually really feel for this creator because even though her original video did fall into the realm of partner shaming, she quickly learned the consequences of that and has been very vocal about the negative outcomes. It's very clear that her intention of these videos was to be funny, but as we've learned from this series, if you imply that a man is bad in any way, the internet doesn't laugh, they attack. They go straight for the jugular and soon it's not just him they're eviscerating, they're gonna come for you too for being with such a horrible man. This is the importance of protecting the integrity of your relationship in public because when you share these negative parts with people on the internet or in public, long after you've chosen to forgive him, they will still hate him. I mean, she made three videos explaining that he's innocent and she's still getting, not saying he's cheating, but that's what he says. She still shouldn't have drawn the heart on the note and no. This creator is absolutely right that the internet is mean. They're anonymous, they're savage, they're ruthless. It is a lion's den of hate out there. So don't throw your partner to the lion's den. So today's gonna be a new kind of partner shaming episode because this person is coming for all of her partners. Rating my hookups and yes, I'm showing faces. Well, I finally found it. Willy Wonka's Double Standards Factory, a place where women get away with things men could never dream of. Let's go inside. This woman is out here collecting and rating men like they're Pokemon cards, dude. Let's look at the comments. The urge I have to do this. I want to do this. Someone say no. I like your energy, energy, energy. Well, they're going to get mad or step it up. This is bold. I love it. Time for me to do this. There have been a couple people pointing out that she clearly has a type. And look, it's totally fine to have a type. But using the hashtag chocolate is kind of cringe. There comes a point where you're entering racial fetishization, which is also racist. Because you might be thinking, oh, well, I'm speaking well of them, so I'm not being racist. Well, guess what? You're still viewing this person of a certain ethnicity as more of a sexual object than you are as a person, as evidenced by this entire rating scale video thing. And then just, just look at this. I already said it once, baby girl, don't think I don't want to say it twice, so you better move it quick. Bye, 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 bye. You're calling people dark skins? We literally just had an entire football team spend millions and millions of dollars changing their name because of language like this, but you think that because you bang a bunch of dudes you get a get out of racism free card? 
Ladies, if it's creepy and cringe when old white men fetishize Asian women and call them degrading names, it's creepy and cringe when you do it to men of certain backgrounds too. We're on episode 18 of Partner Shaming, the series that constantly teaches us that once you portray your partner as a piece of crap to the internet, you cannot unring that bell. You can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, folks. What's our issue today? So it's Saturday. It's my one day off that I have with my husband. And he's been in the garage all day. But like, I'm in the house. I'm available for conversation. But he's just in the garage on his phone and tinkering and not really doing anything productive. It's his day off and I get that that's what he wants to do. But it's my also mutual day off and I, I'm doing things that I need to do. And I'm just wondering, like, does anybody else's husband just not spend time with them on their one day off? Hold up, we gotta look at these hashtags. Genshin teleport, party with the VMAs, hashtags typically used to generate clout. And then, I'm so lonely, I have nobody. Doesn't sound very Lynn dependent, but anyway. As usual, let's check the comments. Yep, our divorce is almost final. I've always said I didn't get married so I could be alone and a single mom. There's nothing worse than being alone in a marriage. P.S. Check his phone? The comments always go straight for divorce. Like, sis, you know what you really need to do? Before you go out to the garage and ask if he wants to hang out, before even shooting a text and saying, hey, you want to come inside and chill with me? Divorce. Straight for divorce. If he doesn't want to spend every solitary second with you, he doesn't love you. Oh, and go through his stuff. He's definitely cheating. Nah, this was actually my biggest red flag while dating. If we cannot coexist in the same space without talking for a few hours, that's going to be a problem. If you don't tell me what you want and then get mad at me for not giving it to you, I gotta go. But Lauren, you're being so dismissive. I can tell from watching this 30 second clip that this man is clearly a narcissist who stopped caring about his wife's needs years ago. Yeah, I hear you barking, big dog. Y'all, I'm gonna need you to like calm down just a little bit. Y'all are coming after my darling husband way too much. He's the sweetest man ever. Like we spend so much time together, it's almost suffocating. What an unexpected twist. This is the partner shaming formula to a T. Step one, secretly record a video that bashes your partner online. Step two, receive backlash slash your partner finds out about it. Step three, just kidding, we're fine, it was just a joke. It's also so wild to me the way some of these women get mad at other people for bashing their husbands. Like, why do you think they did that? You rang the alarm. Look, here's how social media works. In addition to being forever, you bash your husband online, everyone is going to hate your husband. Then they're going to demand that you leave him. And if you don't leave him, they will turn on you. Look what happens when she tries to defend her husband. Fun fact, successful relationships don't have a person who needs to vent. Don't make excuses for him now. The sweetest man would be helping you. She tries to explain her kids are actually not his kids, so he's a stepdad stepping up and he takes care of the outside work. Jess says, making excuses for him, how sad. Just know when you get fed up and reach a boiling point, we all warned you. I'm telling you, the temporary reassurance and validation might feel good for a short period of time, but long term, these people want you to be miserable. Just remember, don't treat your partner like your ex unless you want them to be one. Well, holy shit, we finally found one. It has been 18 episodes of Partner Shaming, the series where people secretly record and bash their partners online and then expect a healthy relationship afterward, and y'all have struggled to tag me in any videos of men doing this. I have received a couple attempts at submissions. There was this one guy who was showing how his wife bought way too much cheese, and I regretfully did lose that video. It was a little bit too much cheese. And then some of you guys tagged me in a couple Andrew Tate videos, but come on, do better. You have to have a partner to partner shame. I can only speculate as to why this appears to be a more female dominated behavior, but we finally did it. We found a man out in the wild doing this shit. So let's see if the internet reacts the same way. I've literally told my wife like 13 times to not park crooked in the driveway. So you already know what we're about to do. We're gonna take care of this right now. Oh, she didn't even lock her car. First thing we want to do is take the seatbelt and put it through the steering wheel. Take your clasp like that. Go ahead and lock it and leave it. We'll get a pin and fill this out real quick. The Milwaukee. And uh, we just fill it out like that. And now she can't go nowhere. I literally told you I was going to do that if you park shitty again. No, I'm not taking it off your car. Take the... He didn't. He got her ass with a lockout tag out. And maybe I'm telling on myself here, but I don't really see what's so bad about this parking job. I don't know. Maybe he can't back out. I don't know. Definitely seems like a little bit of an overreaction. If I'm the wife, I'm pissed. Like, this is right up there with the partner shaming episode about the woman who stole her husband's boat key so he couldn't go out boating with his son. So usually this is the part where we go into the comments and see that everyone is agreeing with the creator's decision and prompting them to divorce their partner. So as it turns out, he's called out immediately. How comfortable is your couch? You're about to find out, sir. This seems healthy. I'm sure they're fine. Male Karens crack me up. That's cold. 
This one's very underrated, but if you wanted to take the kids to school, just tell her. A lot of people are just asking if he's still alive. Look, there's a reason that men don't partner shame, and it's not just because the comments aren't in their favor. It's because of this. So I gotta do a dump run. I'm gonna get this all tied down. I got some different straps. Let me unlock the door real quick. Okay. Hi. Now I know why she got up so early in the morning. Have fun walking. All right, well played, well played. I need the key to go do the dump run. What do you mean I gotta find it? <laughs> this woman literally was like, Uno reverse, bitch. I mean, he taught her how to do it in the video. She literally used the video that he made to try and shame her against him. This woman is galaxy-brained and I support her. Remember, karma's not a bitch, she's a mirror. So don't put out any bullshit in the world that you don't want to see right back at you.